Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. We are now on part three of our Tremec install. Now, if you recall, part one, we had to figure out our alignment that's needed on the bell housing, All right? So bell housing has to move in this direction by 19 thousandths to get it within five thousandths of being concentric with the crankshaft which sounds crazy. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. I've never done this before. So we're all here as a learning experience. Part two, if you recall, we had to pull the dowel pins, which was a pain in the butt. So check that out if you're struggling with that. Now today we have our new dowel pins from Silver Sport. They're actually a split end that fits in the block with a fastener that widens it or you get your final location and they're offset you can tell they're not quite straight so you can actually offset your bell housing and that's what we're going to do so before we go onto the car I i'm going to show you what's going on on paper and then we'll get to it be right back all right guys before we get under the car i wanted to point out something so if we uh, last episode, if you haven't seen it, please check it out because that's actually how you can get your dowel pins out, which was not easy. So we have a bore in the bell housing. Let's call the bell housing like this. And this bore needs to be centered around the crankshaft by five thousandths of an inch. And that's why we had a measure run out. So the... Um, on mine, I have to shift the bell housing over uh, 19 thousandths, and that's why we have these cool dowel pins that were sent to me by Silver Sport. So this end, the split end, goes in the block, and the high end, this is 21 thousandths, this point right here, which I'll mark with a, a Sharpie. And the cool thing is the flats... There's wrench flats on here, which lines up with that high point, so you can actually take your wrench and make it perfectly aligned. So if your dowel pin is here, you can use your wrench to line it up in the direction you need. Same with the other dowel pin. It needs to be pointed in the same direction. So both of these will go in. If you can see, there's a mark, there's a stamp on the end. They need to point in the same direction. If you need to go down, you go down, point them up. That makes sense. So they need to be pointed in the same direction to shift the whole bell housing over. So let's get to it. All right, team. So what we need to do, what we need to do is figure out our orientation of our dowel pin. So this is roughly where bell housing is going you can see the arrows here this is where we need to point our dowel pins so it's just uh it looks like five degrees five degrees down so what we'll do we'll put our i put some wd-40 on the ends see if we can get these in oh well, that one fit nice Oh yeah, we're good. And what we want to do is point, remember this mark on the end is where we want to orient our direction on both sides. So both of them are pointed in that direction. And to help with our alignment, I figured I'd get a straight edge and I'll put it right on the wrench flat. So you can tell it's kind of pointed down, a little too far down. I think we need to be more at that angle. So we just take our wrench, move it a little bit. My flat edge. I think that looks a lot better. And we'll do the same on this side. I'm using the bottom flat. That looks pretty good. I'm going to lock them down with my spanner wrench, keep it in position. 
and use my Allen wrench. Right, before we put the bell housing on, we need to talk about how I'm measuring this. Because if you missed the first video, please review it. But what we need to do is we need to attach a dial indicator onto the crank. And we're going to turn the motor over and we're going to measure we're going to measure the runout on the gauge. So this is a, a gate a runout indicator I pulled from my wheel degree kit and then I bought this uh, snake looking contraption from uh, McMaster car. You can get them on Amazon um, but my, my, I needed it the next day so McMaster car had it. Um, but it's got a magnetic attach um, attachment. Just flip the switch and it sticks there and we're going to orient it in the bore and then spin it around to measure the run out. Now I don't have my flywheel on here for that reason. I tried it with the flywheel and this magnet didn't stick very well so I'm going to go ahead and use you don't need the flywheel on there and so we're going to mount the um, bell housing and then we're going to play with the orientation here to get the the right setting to start our measurement i'm going to go ahead and put the bell housing on and i'm probably going to need my uh, rubber mallet uh, just to finesse it into place so here we go <clears throat> All right, we're on. And double checking. You can see that angle. It's pretty close. I think we were maybe like that when we we set the dowel pins, but now we can go ahead and measure it. And uh, it's gonna take me a while to set up the dowel indicator, but I'll show you guys uh, the end result. All right, guys. So I had a monkey with it. To get it to, to the right spot but I got the dial indicator as close as I could to parallel with this surface and as perpendicular as I could to the radius and once you're in this spot this is actually really a two-man operation um, because you need someone rotating the crank and by the way take your spark plugs out if you haven't done so Take your spark plugs out and what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this one rotation and we're going to see if we have anything past five thousandths. So I have my dial indicator set at zero and you guys are going to have to help me out. You're going to have to watch this for me while I spin the crank. Ah, the joys of doing it by yourself. <laughs> so... Here we go. I'm just turn the motor over one time and then you guys can keep an eye on the needle. I'm going to go back and review the video to see if I surpassed five thousandths and hopefully we don't. Okay guys, you have no help the last time. I'm just kidding. Uh, I changed the, the view so we can watch the dial a little bit better. So I have it zeroed out. So I'm going to go one revolution and let's see that we don't exceed five thousandths again. <coughs> All right, guys, are we good? Oh, we got back to zero. Let's uh, review the tape. All right, guys, I reviewed the tape. We are actually at five thousandths. We went negative three and then positive two, and the total's five. So we could leave it as is, but I'm gonna do it a couple more times just to uh, get some reassurance for myself because you wanna do this a few times to make sure you always come back to zero uh, to make sure the gauge, the indicator didn't slip at all. So um, I'm going to play with it, and i uh, see you in a minute. Hey guys, we did it. So it took me a few attempts to get this in the right location so I can repeat my readings. 
Uh, the reason is you want to make sure you can go back to zero every every revolution to make sure your gauge didn't slip. Oh man, that sucked. The way to break a dial indicator, just drop it on the ground. Wow. So what I recommend is you get the dial indicator from Silver Sport because that's set up for that bore reading that we had to do. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling with this. It took me like a half hour to go back and forth and back and forth. Um, the other good news is I misspoke. I mentioned five thousandths was our target. I was able to repeat five thousandths run out uh, when I reset the gauge. The good news is the target is actually ten thousandths. Our alignment target is half of that. So half of the run out is the alignment. So our run out was five thousandths. That means our alignment is only off two and a half thousandths, which is awesome. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, be sure to subscribe because next week is going to be a pain. Uh, we have to put the transmission in to test fit. So the bell housing is still on the engine. We don't need to install the flywheel. We don't have to have the pressure plate on. We just put the transmission in and check for uh, space around the transmission. And knowing my luck, we're going to have to cut the tunnel open. Not looking forward to it. So until next time, you guys know the drill. Building fast, driving faster. See ya.